There are so many rare, never before, or rarely seen gems in this episode of Bewitch Secrets Behind the Scenes that I can hardly believe it myself. Just a quick sneak peek. We've unearthed the 1980 home video on-camera fan interview with Dick York where he talks about leaving the show and his replacement, Dick Sargent. Unbelievable. Some rare promos aired the weeks and months before Bewitched ever hit the air. A rare Paul Lind interview. All the recordings ever done of the Bewitched opening theme by famous singers you'll know. A show producer settling the questions, was Dick York really in love with Elizabeth Montgomery? And very shocking accusations of how Liz really felt about Dick. Crazy Samantha, Darren, and Andorra doppelgangers known as stand-ins. And my all-time favorite, a commercial that gives a look at the studio and set of the Stevens living room. So much to get into. To start, I want to thank many of you who connected some of these things to me. I never set out to be any sort of bewitched expert. I did a little fan favorite spinoff that went viral on YouTube. You asked for more and more. And we now have four bewitched continued episodes. Pretty cool. Then I started hearing from many of you and people in the industry telling me behind the scenes secrets, even more than I learned from my friendship with Bill Asher, producer and director of Bewitched. For example, and most recently, I was contacted by a sound engineer in Hollywood who had the original recordings of some of the Bewitched magical sound effects. Can you imagine? Want to hear a few? Here you go. Here are some pure zapping ins. And zapping outs. Some Esmeralda sounds. And this one's my favorite, the incantation tingles. And a few others. Way too cool. Okay, let's get into some of the other great gems. And I'm going to start with one of the best. In the past, I've shown you rare interviews of Elizabeth Montgomery and Dick York nor the end of their lives. This was one with Dick York, heartbreaking as he sits in his small Michigan home, reminiscing while struggling to breathe from emphysema. Did you ever get to see Elizabeth Montgomery after that day that you left the set? No, not in person. I called her just a couple of weeks ago, and she was busy or out of town or something like that. And this one of Liz on Entertainment Tonight, remembering her bewitched days. That was very, very exciting for me. I mean, I learned a lot of stuff. A lot. Do you get upset when people ask you to do the nose thing? No, not really. It's just <laughs> so crazy. And though I've shown you a very rare Agnes Moorhead interview, no one seems to think she ever talked about Bewitched in her very few interviews. Yes, I have a farm in Ohio, and I'm now um, looking around by two white mules. Anyone? Uh, no, I'm, I'm very anxious to get a pair of mules. Why white mules? White mules. Oh, I don't know. They just seem more romantic than dark mules somehow. But this next one is crazy. It's 1980 and looks to be some sort of fan convention. Here, Dick York is 52 years old, still a heavy smoker. He agrees to sit down with the young fan and talks about the end of his run playing Darren Stevens and even starts talking about how difficult it must have been for Dick Sargent to step in and take over his new role. This is an amazing find. Take a look. Dick Sargent had one of the toughest jobs that any actor ever has to face. That means you go in and replace somebody who's established on the show. Everybody loves the show and all that kind of stuff, and he has to come in and replace a guy. No matter what he does, I mean, he could have been Spencer Tracy, and they'd have said, well, he's not quite as a fat other guy. Dick is a marvelous actor and everything else, and I felt guilty about that. I felt, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, that he has to carry the extra load of replacing me and all that kind of jazz. 
So you see what I think about my career and about this business. I love it and I don't want to do anything to harm it. Did you think Bewitched was going to be gone or were you sad that they said, well, we can replace Dick York? Oh, no. No. I didn't get uh, to get Oh, no. My ego isn't, isn't invested in that. I did everything I could right up until the last single minute when the time when I, and I think the people on the show expect me. Remember your last episode? Yeah. It was one about, uh, oh, Darren has a new pair of shoes that are, they're kind of pointy shoes. And Maurice Evans, who played the, uh, my father-in-law on the show, uh, had convinced me that I could work magic and do everything all that kind of crap because I had on these pointed shoes. So naturally, he goes out and makes a fool out of himself and every other blood and thing. And uh, that show was finally completed. Uh, after I left the show, I guess they what was it like on the final, on the set, on the final. The final things on the set, oh, there's, you know, there's a lot of sadness connected with anything like that. But everybody realizes it. My God, if an actor comes in and he's, you see, that's what the people out out uh, out here uh, don't know about the different things that actors have to put up with on the set because they do love each other and we all cling together like a like a bunch of babies. Still well, I don't know if the viewers really know because we really haven't seen it for, for around 10 years ago. It was, it was because of a back ailment that you, that you had to leave the Bewitched television yeah. series, which you had uh, were, were involved with for five years. And uh, as you were quoted as saying, that it was just too much pain. And you found yourself going to the psychologist and going to the doctor for nova pain. That's doctor, right. That you just had to get out. I did. I had to, I had to go on out. What a gem that is. Wow. Okay, another rare clip I've shared in the past, but never in this series is Elizabeth Montgomery dancing as Samantha on the TV show Hollywood Palace. Take a quick look. And now, from the Hollywood Palace, here is your hostess, the lovely star of television's Bewitched, Elizabeth Montgomery! Coming up, we have theme songs of Bewitched sang by several different artists. But before we get to that, let's stay on Liz and Dick and the often debated scandal that Liz didn't like working with Dick. So the two big reasons that pop up in discussion are, one, because of Dick's addiction to pain pills and other substances that often had him as a no-show for filming. But the other big one was that Dick, though married during the run of the show and the whole time afterwards, was wildly in love with Elizabeth. Here is William Frogue. Frogue was nominated for an Emmy as a producer on Bewitched, so he would definitely know. Now, I want to warn you, it's a real ball buster, for lack of a better way of saying it. It may forever change how you watch the show as he spares no words, telling the story of what Elizabeth Montgomery told him about Dick York. Having produced Gilligan's Island, which would have been an immediate hit, to no surprise. I got a call from uh, Bill Asher, who was the producer of Bewitched, 
and it was the husband of Elizabeth Montgomery. And he said, would you come meet me? I said, sure. So I went over. He said, I'm, not, I'm producing and directing some of the shows, but I, I'm not going to produce it anymore. I'd like you to produce it. I said, really? He said, sure. Come on over. I got a, the seat is yours. So I called my agent. They confirmed the deal. It was the same thousand a week and, and a week to week. And so, I, I mean, one year. So I went. It was an offer I couldn't pass up. It was perfect because I left CBS and went right to it. The first meeting, I was going to tell you, the first meeting I'm privy to is with Asher, Harry Ackerman, and uh, that's, it, that's it, just the four of us. And the first thing out, out of, um, no, Liz was there. And the first thing out of Liz's mouth is, we've got to get rid of him. Now, I'm brand new and I'm wondering who the hell is him? I have no idea. And the whole thing went, we got to get rid of him. Liz was at him. So the meeting's over and I finally had to say to Bill, who is him? He said, Dick York, Liz can't stand it. Now, the, what I think the truth was, nobody will know, but I think Dick was madly in love with Liz. He w went off camera, he would just lie there he had, a, he had to lie on a backboard. He'd hurt his back in a Jeep accident. And he would just lie there looking at her like longingly. It was pretty clear he was very smitten. I don't know about you, hard to listen to for me. Well, some shocking stuff. Okay, let's switch gears and lighten it up a little bit. Here's a general rare interview with Paul Lind, same type of setting, where he's talking about how he sees acting as demanding and exhausting. Well, I can't stand actors, you know, that walk through a part. But, you know, you hear that a lot. I've never, I've never worked with an actor that walks through a part. If they do, I just, you know, get a gun and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> don't fool no, around with it. No, no, don't fool around. No, if you walk through a role, you don't belong in show business. Yeah. You've got to act like it's the first time you've ever done the role because no one in that audience has seen you do it. Mm -hmm. and but each night you're still nervous. Always. And... You know, I, I was told by so many people uh, uh, that it would, it would lessen and it would get easier for me, and I, it hasn't. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it has gotten to the point that, um, you know, I, I constantly talking about retiring because uh, there's got to be more fun than performing. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a challenge. It's such a demanding thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's such a responsibility, and I'm I'm lazy, and and you know I'm getting up there in years, and I want to go dancing and have fun, and <laughs> performing uh, performing is a, is an enormous responsibility, mm -hmm. enormous. Well, I guess you reach a point where you um, where I guess you feel you do you feel you owe your audience to something, or you owe them everything, you owe them your life, your money, everything you have. I. That's why I do the autograph line. I, I love to meet them because mm -hmm. uh, I never get to see them. Uh, you know, in Hollywood, I'm in a limousine or a car, or or when I go to the studios, the guards are there, and you never get to be with them. Mm -hmm. And on these summer tours, uh, you know, people will say, "Oh, Mr. Lynn, I'm just so glad you do the autograph line." You know, a lot of people w won't do this, and. I say, well, I only do it because I enjoy it, or I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Paul Lynn. Elizabeth Montgomery rarely talked about her bewitched days, but in all fairness, she rarely did television interviews at all. Montgomery there were a few about her made-for-TV movies. Well, join us this morning. <laughs> now I have a beer. Yes. You both? And this early one, when Bewitched first hit the air. So Do people really who watch the show think you're a witch? Oh, yes. Are yes. you serious? Well, they don't, I don't think. I kind of wish I were sometime. <laughs> Because it'd be nice to get rid of all those dishes in the sink, you know, as easily as I, I know how you, I know you must feel the same way. But it's, uh, people are always saying, like when the Dodgers were in such terrible trouble, you know, if anybody spotted me in the stadium, I'd hear twitch, twitch, and unfortunately it didn't do us any good. It didn't do any good no, in the it World was very Series. very tragic, wasn't that awful? You know, what happens when you're in a series and uh, 
You just, you know, you want to have a child, you become pregnant. What do they do? They have to just <laughs> rewrite the whole series? Uh, well, luckily, uh, when I found out that I was pregnant with our second little boy, well, I didn't know it was our second little boy when I was pregnant, but um, they wanted Samantha to have a baby on the show. And we didn't know whether it was going to be a boy or a girl or, you know. What did they want happen. on the show? Well, we didn't know until quite late, until we started working with scripts and things mm -hmm. like that. And it just kind of worked out that I had a boy and Samantha had a girl. Oh, that's and so great. we call her Tabitha. Your husband, uh, who is Bill Asher, really yes. does direct the show. Oh, yes. He's the uh, regular director on the show, and he's, you know, one of the co-producers and kind of coordinates a lot of... Is that good, Elizabeth, having Oh, your, your I husband? love it. I just love it. And we have a marvelous time together. And it eliminates the two-car problem about having, you know, two cars out all the time and waiting for your husband when he's got one and you've got the other. And we work very well together. I met him working for him, as a matter of fact. Do you have any time for any any uh, act thing, activities with your children at home, with your oh. busy schedule? Well, yes, it's a little rough, and thank goodness they're young. You know, the oldest one is just a little over two, uh -huh. and the youngest one was a year old, October 5th. So they're quite a handful. That's close together. But, yes, it is. But, uh, you know, the children's hours are so peculiar, and I don't think it matters as long as we have enough time to really be with them. If they're kept up a little later at night, as long as they get their sleep. So we see them every night when we come home. We're up at 5.30 in the morning, which is before they ever get up. And, uh, oh, I hope that wasn't me. Did those lights I think dim? you did. You moved your nose, and I <laughs> oh, saw the lights happened? dim. Oh. I don't want to say anything. But <laughs> <laughs> you, you are very good at darts, they tell me. Well, my husband and I play quite a bit. I'd like to challenge you if you, promise, oh! if you promise not to tweak your nose while we're playing the game, okay? <laughs> okay, I, I promise. It's easier. Oh, no. watch me stumble over that. Here, where, where are they? Okay. Where are they? Oh, good grief. I guess this is about... Would you look at the size of that thing? <laughs> is that too small? Well, well, it ain't it looks big. Like, it looks like it's 90 feet away. Okay, We're only supposed try, to try, try a couple, of, just so you get the range. Uh -huh. Oh, I think that, oh boy. Ah, not bad. Bewitched. But one thing she did go on record saying several times was her favorite episode of the entire run of the series was a Christmas episode called Sisters at Heart, which addressed the issues of what she saw as racism in the 60s and 70s. Here is a specially recorded opening close to that episode. Hi, this is Elizabeth Montgomery. Welcome to Bewitched, next on ABC. Tonight's show was created in the true spirit of Christmas. The story was written by the 10th grade English class at Thomas Jefferson High School in Los Angeles. My friends at Oscar Mayer and Company and I feel it is a very special Bewitched, conceived in the image of innocence, and filled with truth. Hi. We hope you enjoyed tonight's story as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Oscar Mayer and company, together with all of us on Bewitched, wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a happy and peaceful New Year. That was, of course, late in the run of the show, but long before the show ever hit the air, the network had to let the audience know that it was coming. So it did a string of promos, some with clips from the first few episodes of season one, and some that were shot long before production even began. Let's start with those. One done by each of the main characters of Samantha, Darren, and Endora, which is a little bizarre. Once upon a time, a nice little girl named Samantha switched her nose, and a nasty little boy turned into a rose. And that night, as she was combing her curls, she said, Mother, am I different from other girls? And her mother said, Oh, there is one small switch. Mother's precious is a baby witch. So Samantha grew up and fell in love. And her mother said, What if he finds out you're a witch? I'm going to tell him. Okay, if you're a witch, where's your black hat and broom, and how come you're out when it isn't even Halloween? Mother was right. You're prejudiced. Can a genuine witch find happiness as a housewife? Mother! How did a nice witch like you ever get into a spot like this? 
Get Bewitched, every week on ABC. I'm Dick York. In a new comedy series on ABC entitled Bewitched, I play a fellow who discovers on his wedding night he's married to a witch. <laughs> That's pretty silly, isn't it? Uh, by the way, have you met my wife? Uh, we'll see you every week on ABC. Honey? Now, you may not believe this, but I'm a witch. It's true. You should have seen the look on my husband's face when I told him. What? It was our wedding night. You're a witch, all right. And if things weren't tough enough, Mother showed up. Mother, how would you like to spend your wedding night with a bullfrog? The idea of my being married to a mortal just didn't appeal to her in the slightest. At times, though, like when your husband's old girlfriend decides to be a little, excuse the expression, witchy. Being a witch is very handy. <laughs> So my wife's a witch. Every married man has to make some adjustment. Join us and get <coughs> Bewitched every week on ABC. Here's a crazy one to watch now that we know how Liz felt about Dick. There is no way of knowing how early her dislike for Dick started, but imagine shooting this and a lot of the following episodes where there is lots of kissing going on. This is The Cure. Our new show, Bewitched, is a modern version of that age-old story, Can a Young Aggressive Advertising Executive Find Happiness Married to a Witch? Watch Bewitched and see. Here are a few others using clips from episodes that were already shot. You benumbed, bewildered, bereft. Tell you how to fix it. Get bewitched. I don't know where you get it. Must be from your father. Certainly not from my side of the family. Mother. This is Dick York inviting you to join Liz Montgomery, Agnes Moorhead, and myself every Thursday on Bewitched. This is Dick York. I want to explain a little something about our new series, Bewitched. I'm not the witch in it, uh, Liz Montgomery is. She plays my wife, you see, and uh, I married a witch. Agnes Moorhead plays my mother-in-law. She's a witch also. Don't you understand? I'm happy with him. Don't talk to your mother like that. I'll tell you when you're happy. Darling! Mm. Is this your little bride? How do you do? Won't you come in and meet my friends? I know a great Italian restaurant right around the corner. No. All right. But no tricks. Uh, what's so new about having a witch who's a wife? Uh, I, mean, I mean a wife who's a witch. Watch be witch and see. I want nothing more than to be married, be a good housewife, and a helpmate to the man I love. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. This is Dick York, reminding you that my wife's a witch. And if you don't watch Saul and Bewitched, she's liable to turn you into a pumpkin. Witch be watched. He's coming in. I mean, watch Bewitched on this station. I'm Dick York. That's my wife, and she's a witch. See for yourself on Bewitched. I've mentioned in the past that my fascination with Bewitched as a kid, and certainly still as an adult, was the production. I think Bill Asher was a genius. Bill, of course, being the producer and director and Liz's husband at the time. This next clip is a commercial for Lux Soap. I believe it only aired in Canada. What's extraordinary about it is it gives us a rare look at the set as the camera pans from the Stevens living room right into Elizabeth Montgomery's dressing room, or at least a set used for her dressing room. Now, unfortunately, the quality isn't very good, but I played it over and over again, amazed at this rare glance behind the scenes. 
In this corner of a famous Hollywood studio is a very special dressing room belonging to TV's most beautiful witch. Just look at that lovely complexion. Speaking of complexions, would you like to see some magic? In this hand, I have a bar of Lux Beauty Soap. And in this hand, a bottle of expensive moisturizing lotion. What if I were to put them both together, like this? <laughs> Then, every time you washed your skin with Lux, you'd also be moisturizing your skin to keep it soft and smooth. Because of the moisturizing lotion, right in the Lux lather. Well, that's what the Lux people did. Put moisturizing lotion in every bar of Lux. Took them years to learn how to do it. But I can't think of anything easier. Or nicer for your complexion. New Lux keeps your skin softer and smoother because there's moisturizing lotion in Lux. To my knowledge, there is nothing out there that shows the set like that. All right, let's look at that open again in slow motion. Super cool. I just love that. All right. As we round out this episode, I wanted to show you something also very cool that I discovered. You may know that as production is setting up shots, lighting, blocking, and all the other things that go into getting ready for filming, they use stands-ins instead of the actual actors. Agnes Moorhead actually went on record to saying she would never stand in to set up a shot. So stand-ins have to be the exact height of the actors and have the same basic coloring in terms of hair and skin tone and so on. Well, I discovered something when recently watching a Halloween episode. Samantha, Darren, and Endora's stand-ins are clearly used as background extras, almost as a joke. So much so that Endora's stand-in, for example, has you doing double takes to make sure it isn't her. At one point, Bill Asher, who directed the episode, has them standing right behind the stars. I think he was just playing with us. Take a look. By the way, I've been meaning to ask you, where's the music coming from? Oh, we have our own special hookup. Ghost to ghost. So very easy to spot the Adora stand-in. It totally looks like her. The Elizabeth Montgomery stand-in, again, easy to see because she was often used as Serena in the double shots. Oak leaves and moss. Spanish moss, I think, with meats, foot oil, and vinegar. Really? And finally, for dessert, flamingo flambe with fricassee. Of Now let's round it all out with the last two things. Many have come to know and love the opening theme song of the Bewitched episodes, and you may know that that theme was actually written with lyrics. Here are a few quick listens to some of the renditions done over the years.
last one, of course, was just called Samantha, but wasn't the opening theme. Pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this look back, controversies and all. I want to leave you with something I recently saw on social media that I think was very well done. It's from a series called Then and Now and looks at the main players of the show as the years move forward and they aged. Thanks for watching, everyone, and keep the magic alive. Take care. Thank you.